Hello and uh, welcome back everybody. Uh, this is our Southern California housing market update for November 2nd, uh, 2021. Uh, we are past Halloween. We have less than 60 days left in the year. Uh, I'm your host, Stephen Mead with Domicile Real Estate, real estate for people who love houses. And uh, I wanna talk a little bit about why this year isn't looking very much like last year and why I think it's going to be very different than last year in the next couple of months. Uh, if you watched our first time entry level buyer market update on Friday, I think I, I started going to this, uh, kind of our whole market numbers are looking very, very similar. So I think this is a trend that is going to extend across the market. And you know, I, I think we have a tendency as human beings to try and recognize patterns and think that things will be like whatever they were before. So for example, when home prices go up, the natural tendency is to think this is going to look like 2007. This fall, our natural tendency is to think that this fall will look a lot like last fall. And I don't think it will because we're seeing some very big differences in the market. And I think these are differences that might affect your strategy going forward over the next couple of months. So let's launch into it and kind of see where we're at. And I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So the first thing I want to talk about is active listings. And we've been watching this downward trend and I've said, oh, that's normal. That's what it normally looks like. But there's a little bit of a problem. And the little problem that we have is that uh, active listings are dropping a lot faster than they normally do. So the numbers that we are seeing right now are looking a lot more like middle of December numbers, not like beginning of November numbers. I think that our overall inventory lower levels are lower this year than they were last year. Uh, and in fact, if you look down here in our one to two million category, uh, current active inventory is actually less than it was at the beginning of this year, which is typically a low point, right? That January period is kind of the, the minimal mark. Um, and we are heading towards inventory that is looking a lot like the spring in our under $1 million category. Again, this is for Los Angeles and Orange Counties. Okay, so look, look at that as sort of exhibit A, that this year is looking different than last year. Exhibit B, so this is, this is our, our new listings that have come up um, you know, over the last 14 days. And if you look at where this number is, this is really driving things. Sellers are not putting their homes on the market despite record prices. Uh, we're really not seeing those sellers come out. In fact, if you look back here, our new listings are less than they were at the moment than they were in the beginning of January. And in fact, they're starting to look a lot like they were the last two weeks of December, right? Which is really kind of a dead period for new listings. And we're seeing this not only in our under 1 million category, but, but even over here in our, in our one to 2 million. And that, and that had been a little bit more resistant to drops, but look at how sharp these drops are, I mean, I, I don't wanna be dramatic and use the term plummeting new listings, but I, I think that might even be an accurate statement to use here. Now, if we look at our new escrows, well, this is kind of interesting. This number is also going down, but it's not going down nearly as fast, right? This number is not, that, that, that shape is not as nearly as sharp of a curve downward. And if you look here in our one to 2 million, demand seems largely unfazed in that price range. And that, that's going to kind of change our marketing dynamics. So how do we reconcile uh, new listings coming on the market versus properties going under contract? We'll do that through an absorption rate. And boy, uh, here's kind of where the rubber meets the road on this, right? Um, under 1 million, look at where we are. I mean, this has been you know, if you look past at this graph, right? I mean, there's a lot of ups and downs, but it's real hard to not deny this trend from about the middle of September onward. I mean, that, that's a pretty even and uniform rise in absorption rates in our under 1 million category. We are well into the 90s. And boy, look at what's happened on 1 to 2 million. We are approaching 100% absorption. And what that means is that means that buyers are a lot more active in our marketplace than sellers are. And whenever you see that in a marketplace, not just in terms of 
you know, uh, perception, right? But in terms of these raw numbers of homes coming out of the market, that's going to put a squeeze on inventory. And that's exactly what's happening when we go back to that first chart. We are watching inventory drop. And in fact, we're, we're watching it kind of drop fairly dramatically. And what that's doing is that's putting us in this kind of hyper competitive zone in the market where there just are not enough houses for everybody that's out there looking. Now, if you look at our closed prices, again, I always give this cautionary tale. This is based on contracts that were negotiated four to six weeks ago. But you know that luxury market, which had been kind of taking a beating is rebounding. We've got things rebounding a little bit in our median tier. And then we've got things at least flat, right, in our entry level. But I think you watch, wait a week, we're gonna see this tick upward as well as kind of some of that September market, September, October market actually kind of comes into play for closing. Now, this is our secondary measure of sort of competition. And this tells us a little bit more about the nature of which houses are going under contract. And what we're seeing is even though our market is getting more hyper competitive, but this number is kind of hovering around the 70% level for under a million. And it's kind of hovering in the low 70s for the one to two. What is this telling us? Well, it's telling us that a lot of this buying behavior is being driven by people going back to houses that have been on the market for a while. And even those homes, uh, maybe the ones that have been sitting 30 days, those are suddenly starting to get multiple offers and disappear from the marketplace. So all of these things really kind of point to a market that is being more competitive. And I, and I see upward pressure on prices, which is unusual. That's not normally what we are talking about in the November time period. In fact, let me go off screen share for a second. I've talked about this a couple of times where people seem to think that if we say home prices are gonna go up 6% in a given year, that means home prices are gonna do like half a percent every month throughout the year. Well, that, that's not the way it works, almost never. What happens is we have spring, prices will take a jump. They'll kind of go up a little bit through the summer. They'll actually drop a little bit towards the end of the summer, kind of rise a little bit September, maybe a little part of October, and then they sort of like drop off, right? As, as we head towards the end of the year, they will drop off. They're not dropping. So whenever we see the prices holding steady even, that, that's kind of a different kind of market than we're used to seeing. You know, maybe about a couple months ago, I said we were seeing what I call the normal fall market. I, I don't feel like this is normal anymore. This is in fact an, an abnormal market. And you know, my concern is that if you're a buyer and you're sitting on the sidelines, right? Um, you know, you you may you may be surprised by some price increases happening towards the end of the year. That's unexpected. If you're a seller, um, you know, you, you, traditional wisdom says now is not a good time to list your house. I actually think now is a good time to list your house, especially if your house is less than perfect. I think buyers are more willing. At this moment, we're going back to one of those markets where they are being less picky about what they're getting, I think. And they're saying, we want to get a house by the end of the year. We want to get a house before interest rates go up. So whenever you see that asymmetric behavior between buyers and sellers, that can really be a time to take advantage of things if you're a seller. And I know that goes against kind of all of our conventional wisdom, which says the holidays aren't a great time. Not this year. This year, holidays are actually a pretty good time. Um, you know, we're going to watch these stats weekly, but that's just kind of what we're seeing right now. So let me jump back in here. If you look at our list, our close to list ratio, you know, I, I kind of talked about this sort of heading down towards around 102%. And, and what does that mean, right? That's exactly what's happened. Um, we see a little bit of a rise here for our one to 2 million. Uh, we took a dive on this for our under 1 million. Remember, this is based on close stats from four to six weeks ago. Um, so we are just now kind of getting into this fall busier market. I think this number might even bump back up again. We might start seeing that in the next couple of weeks. Um, I would have expected this to go down to about a hundred percent by the end of the year. That's what happened last year. If you look here back on our graph, if we're examining where were we back in December of last year, well, we were right around a hundred percent, maybe a little bit higher. Look at where we are right now, and these numbers just are not diving like we expected them to towards the end of the year. Another sign we are not in what we would call a typical fall market. Um, days on market, here is another one 
that really needs a little bit of perspective. Look at where days on market were towards the end of last year. This was uh, 1221 of 2020. 37, 38 days for under 1 million and 55 days for 1 to 2 million. Where are things now as we head into November? Well, we're at 21 days for under a million and we're like at 27 days. This is not the same market we saw last year. I would have accepted that you saw we kind of fell to a bottom and started rising. I would have seen, almost expected like a, a parabolic shaped curve to this graph, but look what happened. It got stunted and it just kind of flattened out indicating that com competition is not abating like we would normally expect it to as we head in towards the holidays. And then finally, we've got our affordability chart. Um, this is my favorite chart because this talks a lot about, you know, do I think we're in dangerous territory on pricing? And you know, as time has gone on, you can really see that this is, this is a rational market dynamic working in my opinion, right? We had a period down here, this was 2018, that's our baseline year. All through 2021, homes were underpriced, underpriced, underpriced from an affordability perspective, meaning from a payment perspective versus wages. Then we kind of got into this 100 to 115% zone and we've been steady in that zone. That's actually the mark of a fairly mature market that, that is operating at least in terms of that price equilibrium. This is not people irrationally just paying whatever for houses. It really isn't. Here we are back in this kind of 112, 113% of that 2018 number. Do you feel like wages have gone up, you know, 10, 12, 13% in the last three and a half years? I think they have, especially for wages in those kind of home buying income levels. So when I look at this chart, what I see is a, is a market actually behaving in a way that we would expect. Uh, questions, comments, we love them. If you want to tell us that we are dead wrong about everything and you, you think I don't know what I'm talking about, you are free to do that too. It might spur an interesting conversation. Um, you know, if, if you're a buyer, like I said, I, I think if you're waiting for the relief to come, I just don't see it on the horizon. That relief we were expecting going into these winter months, um, you know, it, it's holding steady, right? As, at the moment, it's not getting worse, but my fear is that it's going to get worse. I see a lot of things pointing to pressure on upward prices. And we might just not have seen the results of those because our closed sales are four to six weeks old. If you are a seller, well, congratulations. If you thought you missed your chance to sell a property that was less than perfect and get buyers in there looking because they want a house, you've got a little bit of a second opportunity to do that. So don't waste it this time around. As always, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Also, um, you know, uh, we have our first time buyer video coming out on Fridays. We also have our architectural video coming out this Thursday. That's a fun one. We feature, we go through a house. And then also if you're on our email list, you get four other cool architectural homes in LA and Orange County that we have highlighted. Um, we're gonna include a link to that below if you would like to sign up for that because I think it's cool and you should sign up for that. Uh, and I'm trying to think, is there anything else? Nope. Well, thanks again for watching and we will see you later on this week.